Hello guys, welcome back to the channel again. So today we are going to discuss uh, the most often asked interview questions for SQL Server. So if you are a full stack developer or a backend developer, then uh, preparing for the SQL interview questions are as uh, important as preparing for the coding questions. Okay, so uh, based on my experience from the interviews I have attended for the service-based companies as well as product-based companies, I'm going to put down uh, the 50 most important questions. So if you are like going through all the 50 questions, then there is a 90% or you can say the 95% uh, probability of uh, that SQL interview being cleared. Okay. So, uh, if, if you like uh, the similar content, okay, then uh, uh, do subscribe the channel and share the content with your friends, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I have divided the 50 questions into five different seasons, okay, so that uh, uh, we should not invest a lot of time uh, watching a single video, okay. So, I'm going to uh, show you the first 10 questions, okay. So, let's get straight into the computer and see the top 10 questions. So the first thing is what is the difference between a store procedure and a function okay so this is like most of an interviewer will ask this question to you so let's get straight into the answer so the first thing is a store procedure can have both input and output parameter but a function can only have an input parameter okay so inside a store procedure you will be able to use the insert update and delete statement uh, so these statements we call as a dml statement okay but inside a function, you cannot use a DML statement. So insert, update, delete a statement, you will not be able to use inside a functions. Only thing you can use there is a select a statement. Okay. The third difference is you cannot utilize a store procedure in a select a statement. So let's say you're writing some select a statement. So inside that statement, you cannot utilize your store procedure. Okay. But that's not the case with the function. You can use the function inside your select a statement. Okay. The next thing is uh, you cannot so for the let's see about this the store procedure so you'll be able to use the try catch block in a store procedure to catch the error but inside a function you cannot use a try catch block okay the next difference is a, a store procedure cannot be called from a function okay so let's say you're creating a functions okay so inside that function you cannot use a store procedure uh, which is already created so that means you cannot call the store procedure from a function but that's not the case with the store procedure so if you have created the store procedure you will be able to call the function from the store procedure okay let's go to the next question and see so i've tried to cover both the questions like uh, theoretical as well as the practical question they ask so the second thing is uh, second question is how to copy one table to another table okay uh, we'll be seeing how to copy the one table to another table uh, with data and without data copy means it is going to create a new table as well okay so let's see that so what i have done is i have created a new table called uh, employee okay so uh, this is not your answer so i'm going to like uh, tell you what is the answer you need to give it to the interviewer so first uh, I have created an employee table. So this is your employee table. Okay. So this is your employee table detail. Now I'm trying to create a new table and copy the data. So the first thing, okay. So I'm trying to create a new table and or uh, trying to copy the data at the same time. So this is the query you need to write. So select a star into new table. So this table is going to be created as well as the data of employee is going to be copied to new table if you are writing where one is equal to one. So this means it is a true. So uh, see this, uh, this table is nothing but the new table. Okay. So after doing this, I am also selecting from the new table. So which gives you this result. So if you see uh, the employee table as well as the new table having the same structure as well as the data has been copied. Okay. So this query you need to use. Coming to the second part where you need to copy without data. So without, without data means you need to create a table to copy the structure as well as uh, you no need to like copy the data. So you need to write the same query. The only thing uh, different will be the filter. So here you need to write uh, one is equal to two or you can say the condition. So one is equal to two means false. It will indicate uh, the table that you should not copy the data, but only you should be able to create the structure of the employee table. So new table two will have the similar structure to the employee, but it will not have the data of the employee. So see, this is your employee table. Okay. And this is your uh, new table two. So if you see clearly the employee table as well as the new table two have the similar number of columns, but new table two doesn't have the data. Okay, so let's go to the next question. So it says how to select even and odd records from the table. Okay, so for that, what I have done is uh, I have created a table uh, employee. Okay, so in this table, I have put four data one, two, three, four. Okay, so ideally, uh, when you try to search the even records, okay, based on the employee ID, 
your second and the fourth one should be selected so this is your result for the event so that is the query you need to write select a star from okay so we are using the help of the we are we are taking the help of the sub query here okay so select star comma row number so you are trying to like uh, find the uh, rank based on the employee id okay so uh, that is the reason why i have written order by employee id as row number from employee as employee as emp where row number modulo 2 is equal to 0 so as everyone knows that uh, uh, even even uh, number criteria is it should be completely divisible by 2 okay so that is what uh, it will give you the event record so uh, this is the result set for event records it has returned the employee id 2 and 4 you need to write the similar query for odd records also but the only different will be there in the filter or condition you can say so here uh, the row number should not be completely divisible by 2 it should always leave a remainder as 1 okay so this is the result set for the second query okay for odd number of records so let's go to the next question and see so it says what is the difference between primary key and unique key okay so this is also one of the most often asked uh, interview question so here uh, you need to see like uh, primary key and unique key so primary key we can have only one primary key in a table okay but you can have uh, more than one unique key inside a table so let's see the second difference so the primary key cannot have a null value okay but unique key can have the null value so by default a primary key is a clustered index okay we'll see uh, what is cluster and non cluster in the next slides okay and by default a unique key is a non cluster index okay a primary key supports an auto increment value so if you have created the table you might be knowing we we have something called identity column so whenever you create a column uh, i mean whenever you create a table uh, it's on your wish if you want to keep a column uh, as identity so that will auto increment the value okay but let's see the unique key so unique key doesn't supports an auto increment value so what is the difference between care and where care okay so i'm going to explain you all four things care where care uh in care and in where care okay so you need to know all the four things because interviewer may ask you what is the difference between care and in care he also may ask you what is the difference between where care and in where care okay so you you should be uh, like uh, uh, confident uh, enough uh, to answer all the four differences so for that you need to know what is care where care in care and in where care so here in this slide i'm going to explain you the difference between care and where care okay so care is something uh, where length is fixed and in where care the length is variable care always takes the define size that we can understand with the help of example here and uh where care having the flexible data size care and where care okay both works for the so this is not the difference this is the similarity so that is what i have uh, highlighted this in a different color so care and where care both works for the non-unicode character means uh, all the things you understand uh, being an indian like uh, alphabet number uh, english character okay these are non-unicode non-unicode characters so uh, every character occupy one byte of a space so that is uh, what we call a data length data length so let's see the example so example of care let's say you have one table called uh, xyz okay so in that table you created one column called city and you define the length as 5 and the data type as care now the next thing is when you try to enter the value into that particular column city okay so you have entered the value as Delhi, okay? So Delhi will have the length as five. So it has taken the data length as five bytes because one byte for each character. So one byte into five is five byte, okay? For Pune also, it has taken five bytes. You know why? Because it is having the fixed length, okay? So it doesn't matter if, if even if you are writing P, U, okay, N, E, anything like uh, any for for anything, it is going to consume five data bytes. Okay, so five bytes is something that is going to consume. Let's see the uh, where care. So for where care, I have defined the I have created one uh, column called city. I mean the same thing. Uh, the data type is where care and the size is five. So for Delhi, it has taken the length as five and the data length as five bytes. Okay, for Pune it has taken only four bytes you know because the length is variable the size is uh, variable because uh, because of what like uh, <clears throat> it has identified that pune can be only done with the four data bytes okay four bytes you can say so it has occupied four bytes so in terms of system performance uh, obviously varchar is better because 
uh, so wherever you know that uh, the size can be variable you can use barcare and if you think the size is fixed because uh, for, for an example if you're writing the code for something right so there is a probability that all the codes are having of three length then it's better to use the care and if you know that uh, the length can be varied then go for the varchar so what is the difference between in care and in varchar okay so for in care the length is fixed for in varchar length is variable so it's similar to var varchar and in uh, i mean care and varchar the only different uh, thing will be here okay this, these are the some different parts uh, for this in care and in varchar so in care always takes the defined size however in varchar uh, takes the flexible data size so uh, the data size is not fixed it can be vary okay so in care works for unicode character and in var care works for unicode character so these are the same thing so that is what i have highlighted in the same color okay so uh, the only difference or the main difference here is uh, it occupies two byte of a space okay because of the unicode character and in var care also occupies two byte of a space for each character so let's see the example so here i have defined one column city and the data type here will be in care not in care it should be in care okay and here it should be in var care so in, in case of in care since the length is fixed okay for delhi it is going to take 10 bytes you know why because every character is going to take two bytes so two byte into five is going to take 10 bytes for pune also since it is a fixed length it is going to take 10 bytes okay in case of var care sorry in var care your delhi right so delhi is having length 5 so 5 into 2 is 10 so it is going to consume 10 bytes and for pune since the size is variable okay so it will take the length as 4 and 4 into 2 which is 8 bytes so it is going to take 8 bytes for pune let's see the next question so it says what is the difference between cluster index and non cluster index okay so just try to understand from the figure so cluster index all the root node have so root node will have a leaf node okay so all the leaf node will have the data so you can directly get the data from the leaf node okay but in case of non cluster index it is similar to the book you know so in book what happened you must have seen the content page so inside the content page it is written that uh, this is the page number and this is the chapter number chapter name and the chapter number page number okay so if you want to know details about that chapter you need to visit the page number to get to know about uh, the complete thing so the similar thing is there with the non cluster index so it says the root node having the leaf node right so the leaf node is not going to store the data directly rather it is going to store the address okay for that particular data so in order to face the data it is always going to refer to the cluster index leaf node okay so let's see some uh, like theoretical difference here so cluster index is faster non cluster is slower cluster index require less memory however non cluster index require more memory in cluster index index is the main data in non cluster index index is the copy of the data a table can have only one cluster index however a table can have multiple non cluster index it can go up to 999 cluster non cluster index okay cluster index have inherent ability of storing data on the disk okay however uh, non cluster index doesn't have the inherent ability of storing data on the disk okay let's go to the next question so it says what is cross join okay so cross join will return all the records where each row from the first table is combined with the each row of the second table okay so it is also called cartesian product so let's try to understand from the figure so this is your first table okay this is your second table so what i have done is in the first table there are three rows one two and three in the second table we have three rows called abc okay so what will happen row one okay row one of the table one is going to join with all the three rows of table two similarly the second row is also going to join with all the three rows of the table two and uh, goes same with the third row also so the next thing is uh, the next question is what is normalization and denormalization okay so normalization is a database design technique to remove the redundant data okay so basically we do it to avoid the duplicate data and uh, how to achieve it so you can achieve it by splitting the table okay by creating a table and making the foreign key references okay 
and here the SQL search can be slower okay uh, and this is a OLTP concept so uh, let me uh, take a few minutes to explain that in detail so uh, let's say you do have one table called uh, employee okay so in that employee table you have uh, employee ID employee name department ID and department name there are more columns but I'm going to discuss this four columns for now so what happened uh, normalization says you don't need to have a all the details in the same main table okay so in this case what we'll do is we'll create a new table called department table and we'll move the department id as well as department name okay and i will be creating one foreign key reference to the department id of the employee table so i will just remove the department name from the employee table i will only keep the department id okay and that department id will a foreign key reference to the department table okay so let's go to the uh, next thing how the search can be slower okay so if someone asks you to find the employee whose department is uh, mechanical so in this case what will happen you have already split the table into two different tables so it is going to take uh, the employee id it is going to search in the first table so it will find this employee id having this department id now it is going to search in the department table with that department id and it is going to find out the department name and then it is going to return you the result that this employee id belongs to de this department okay so that is how the search can be slower OLTP concept and OLTP concept will understand better in the next session. OLTP is like transactional protocol and uh, OLTP is analytical protocol. So OLTP deals with insert, update and delete and OLTP deals with only select statement. Okay, so let's see the denormalization. So denormalization is just reverse of normalization by name itself suggest. So it's a database design technique to improve the search performance. Okay, so uh, you can take the example of uh, the reverse thing, whatever I have given you, like uh, splitting the table into department and employee. Okay, so in that case, what we can do is we can merge both the table department and employee and we can have a single table called employee table. Okay. And inside the employee table, we can have department ID as well as department name so that we can uh, search the stuff from a single table. So it is going to save some time. So the search will be faster. Okay. So let's see the next question. So the next question says how to find the duplicate and unique records inside our table. Okay. So uh, let's see, I have created one table called department. So this is your department table. So department ID one, two, and intentionally I have created department ID three at two places. Okay. So you need to find a record. You need to find a department ID for which there are duplicate records. Okay. And you need to find a department ID for which there are unique records. So let's see the first uh, uh, query for the unique records. Okay. So you need to select department ID comma count of department ID from department and you need to use group by department ID having count is equal to one okay count of department id is one so this this query is going to search for all the rows having occurrence of department id at only one place okay so it will find uh, we do have only two department id one and two which are occurring only for one time so three is uh, not something which is occurring for one time it is occurring for two two different times okay so it is going to return you this query so this is for the unique record so it has returned you the department id one and department id two okay so this is a unique record for duplicate record, you are going to write the same query. The only different thing will be there in the fil uh, filter or condition. So you are going to search uh, if the count of department ID is greater than one. So it is going to find uh, all the records having department ID which are occurring for more than one places. So it will find the department ID having three occurs for more than one place. Okay, so uh, that is all about uh, the 10 questions we have discussed today. Okay, so we are going to cover next 10 question in next uh, uh, session. So thank you guys for watching the video. So uh, if you like the content, just uh, share the content with your friends and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed till so uh, thank you. Bye bye Tata for now. Have a nice day.